Let me finish my let me finish my tater chip because I have to do all my arms and my hands and all my stuff now when I tell this story. <laughs> have you ever heard the alligator story before? Yes, sir. Everybody has. I haven't, <laughs> so tell me. Okay. We we'd, we'd been down to we'd been down to Louisiana and on a gator hunt, and <clears throat> we always like to catch some souvenirs, you know, and bring them back with us. So we had three alligators. We were bringing them back. Well, we left from Louisiana. Well, first of all, we when we was getting the alligators, we got down. We was with these Cajuns, and uh, they assigned us a guide. So Gerald and I was trying to act like, you know, things we'd heard about Cajuns and all. So we got out in the bayou and started down. We hadn't gone from the boat landing probably 100, 200 yards. And Gerald punched me. A gator slid off the bank about four foot long. And not riding anything but just mud and a little bit of water on top of it. So it pushed up a weight and the gator was just right in front of the boat. Gerald punched me and he said, most of me to get it. So I leaned over the boat and got it by the neck, and I just threw it backwards over my head, four-foot gator right in the, in this airboat. <laughs> that Cajun shut that fan off, big fan running that airboat. Ran up on that, standing up in the seat, and he said, don't ever do that again. Don't put stuff in this airboat. He said, alligators will bite you. He said, don't, put, don't, don't be putting things in my airboat. Don't put alligators in my airboat. I said, okay. I said, I won't, I won't do it again. We hadn't gone about another 50 or 75 yards. Gerald punched me, pointed up a tree. Two little old raccoons scampering up a tree. Gerald motioned for the airboat pilot to put in. He didn't see the, the raccoon and he pulled in. I hop out on the bank, skinny up the tree. Raccoon is running up a little limb, get away from me. And I just reached and got one by the nap of the neck. I just threw it back over my shoulder right in the airboat. That fellow went back up on that fan again. I already told you, don't put nothing in my airboat. Just don't be putting stuff in my airboat. He said, I, I, these <coughs> raccoons will bite you. He said, just don't put nothing else in this airboat. He said, put anything else in the airboat, you're going to have to walk back. Well, I looked around, and I knew I didn't want to walk back. So we told him, we said, we're not going to do nothing no more. I said, he said, well, why are you going to do stuff? I said, well, we, where are we from? We heard so much about you Cajuns and how rough and rugged and how tough you are and you catch alligators and you skin raccoons and all that. I said, we just we just trying to fit in. That's all, we're just trying to fit in. We just don't fit in no more. Don't be putting stuff in my airboat. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> we go on and uh, finish up our little trip and all that. But before we finish, I guess it was about, what is the next day, wasn't it? We were all the way down at Avery Island, and we went in a bar to get us a drink. And when we walked in the bar, I heard somebody in the back, that's him, that's him, that's that crazy SOB right there. There he is, that's the one, that's him. Well, they all came out and introduced themselves and all that and wanted to know us, and know if we did that back. And I said, oh yeah, we, you know, we hillbillies. We do all <laughs> kind of crazy stuff, you know, up there where we live in Alabama. And uh, so, they bought us drinks and all. We just had a big time. Told a few stories. So, <clears throat> ended up the trip. And coming on back, we coming back, and it was like Sunday Sunday afternoon when we left out from down there. We got back to Montgomery down there. It was about 1 o'clock on uh, Monday morning. Or Sunday. Might have been Sunday morning. But anyway, it was early. Went in this 7-Eleven uh, across from Gowan's truck stop over there. Walked in, and when I stepped through the door, there was a black guy. He was standing up against the door, holding himself up. When I walked by, he reached over and he hit me. He said, hey, what's that on your hat, man? I pulled it off and looked in. I said, picture of an alligator. You wouldn't know an alligator if he bit you in the butt. You don't know nothing. You just a dumb ass white man. I said, well, I... First of all, I thought, man, I can't believe this. I said, I've never had anybody just automatically just weighed in on anything like that. You know, I said, this fellow just don't realize how he's setting himself up. And I said, uh, yes, sir. I said, I, I apologize for my ignorance. I said, you know, I 
realize I said that, but you know, I was watching that Mutual Omaha Wild Kingdom on there, and that Jim Fowler fella, he's catching something other night on TV, and they look like this, and he's calling them alligators, and I just assumed that you don't know nothing. You don't know a thing. I said, well, like I said, I said, I apologize for my ignorance. I said, but a matter of fact, I said, just came back from Louisiana on an alligator hunt, and them Cajuns gave me this hat, and they said it was a picture of alligator. I put it back on. He said, you ain't been out of Montgomery. You just a big white dummy. And I said, oh, yes, sir. I said, I, said I, I just can't help myself, I guess. I said, I just apologize, and and, and and if you just excuse me, I'll be on my way, and I'll be out here, and I backed up and backed out the door. Went out and reached over in the back of the truck. Just so happened I had a four-foot alligator in the duffel bag. <clears throat> I just reached over in the back and got the duffel bag. I walked back in, I said, man, I said, I got out to the truck and realized that I was probably amongst some of the smartest people I've been around in a long time. I said, this, this, don't this many intelligent people get together one time? And I said, and I got to thinking, maybe one of y'all can tell me what this is. Well, they all just gathered all around me. So I just reached up, unsnapped the duffel bag, counter checkout counter there, and I just went. <laughs> when I did that alligator hit that counter, his mouth came up. They went every direction. <laughs> they went out both doors. The fellow behind the counter jumped out, hit the cigarette, and spent the cigarette falling down in the thing. He was scrambling around. Another one hit the uh, tater chip rack, had it hung around his foot, and he was running across the parking lot, throwing tater chips everywhere. Another one hit the Coca Cola box, and he was sitting there rocking like that. And I said, Lord have mercy. I said, This is a good joke gone bad here. I said, What am I going to do? Look, the alligator was still laying on the counter. He just laying there. I said, Whoo. So I just reached over and slapped his mouth too. Slipped him back in the duffel bag, snapped it up. Started out the door like nothing to even happen. There's a fellow out there pumping gas in the winter bay go and he whirled around, he spread out on that thing. He started hollering, Lord, please, God, don't shoot me, don't shoot me, please don't shoot. I didn't see nothing, I swear I didn't see nothing. <laughs> he thought I had robbed that service station and I was coming out of there with a, a case of, a case of uh, a, a fall style, uh, a carton of cool, a pack of twenties and an Uzi submachine gun. He just he just knew he was gonna be next. <laughs> and I walked by and I tapped on his shoulder. I said, uh, "Have a nice day." He just wilted, just slid down that, just like he just puddled up. So <clears throat> I just walked on. I said, "Oh, let me get out of here." So <clears throat> went out there and got in the truck with my buddy that was driving. He said. That is about the stupidest thing I've ever seen anybody do. He said, I have never seen anybody do anything that stupid. He said, that is dumb. He said, about the dumbest thing I've ever seen anybody do. And I said, well, uh, he said, they're going to call the law. And I looked, and as we was turning around in the medium, here all these people were standing out in the medium in, in the four lane, and they was chasing the truck down the side, running along the side. I said, you crazy. You are crazy. You crazy and pointing at me. And I was just waving at him, going on. He was still, the law's going to get us. He said, $1,000 fine for every alligator. We got three alligators in here. He said, we, we, we're going to jail. He said, and I'm not paying for it. You're going to pay for them alligators. Well, he just on and on and on. After a while, he got on up the road a little bit. And he said, he said, uh, well, he, he just still running his mouth. And I said, uh, you know, I, I just happened to think of something. He said, well, what did you think of? And I said, if you ever want to rob a mini mark, carry you alligator. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you show the Auburn coach? The, the yeah, that was uh, <laughs> coach, coach Pat Dye. We, we was the landscape in his house. And uh, everybody kept telling me, because I never drew anything or would never tell anybody basically what I was doing. And they said, in order to get the idea, you just need to go up to his house and see how his is landscaping and better explain what he's doing. So one day he went up there with me. So we was looking around at all the landscaping and everything. And after a while it dawned on me, I said, you know, they didn't nobody mention to him about the alligator. See, I got a 12 foot alligator in the backyard in a little old pond. I, and it's got a long peninsula berm that goes out in the middle of the pond. So <clears throat> we was headed that way, and I happened to think about the alligator, and I said, hmm. So 
I stopped by the chicken pen, went in there and got me a little old half-grown chicken, you know, put it on my arm. I was petting on it, going down there. He said, what are you going to do that? And I said, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you something I bet you hadn't seen before. So walk on out to the pond and all. And uh, the alligator's name was Freddy. And I hollered, Freddy! Because he knew when you called Freddy, if he didn't get something to eat. But he knew it wouldn't come to you. He wouldn't come to you uh, on top of the water. He'd come to you under the water. So you'd never see him coming. And I saw the bubbles, bubble, 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 coming toward me. He said, what are you going to do with that chicken? I said, I'll show you. I just weighed the alligator, got about 15, 20 foot from it, and I just pitched it right out about five foot off the bank in front of it. Chicken swim. Swim like a duck. Chicken swimming. Doo -doo -doo -doo. He said, well, I'll be doggone. He said, you right. I didn't know chickens could swim. He said, that's the first time I've ever seen a chicken swim. And about that time, that alligator came up on that chicken, Boom! Knocked the chicken, missed the chicken, flipped it, passed him. He jumped back. Now here's this 12 foot alligator, run right by him, chasing this chicken. <laughs> <laughs> he broke. He ran. He he had to have been a good football player because that's the fastest I've ever seen anybody hit 40 yards. I mean, and he, he hit the other end. He just dropped down on his knees. He said, "You crazy?" He, he said, "You crazy?" He said, "What in the world possessed you to do anything like that?" And I said, "Well." I heard you was afraid of them Florida gators. I just yeah. wanted to see for myself. <laughs> About two weeks before, Florida had just carried them to the cleaner. <laughs> and, you didn't like your humor about 